The measurement tools in Review 2017 have been engineered for faster and more efficient calculations. New functionalities such as slope, rise drop, width, and height have been added to some of our existing measurement tools. Brand new tools like polylength have also been added to improve the measurement process and make it that much more intuitive. All of these are intended to speed up your measurement process and eliminate the need to calculate additional measurement totals. These new additions include some of the most highly requested additions for measurements and were designed to streamline takeoff and estimation workflows. The PolyLength tool is new in Review 2017, and it allows you to create a single markup displaying the measurement value for each line segment. As you add line segments, the measurements for these segments are shown, along with the total length of the line. To add a PolyLength, select the tool and click on your starting point. Continue clicking along your desired path, and you can see that each section is measured individually and added to the total as well. Double-clicking will complete the polylength. You'll also notice that if you move control points around, the measurements will update. In the Properties tab, you can choose to show or hide the segment values, and if you would like to align those values on the segment or horizontally. There are times that you might want to apply different properties to various segments of a perimeter or poly length measurements. You might be laying out a path for piping, but halfway through the path, the pipe narrows from 3 inches to 2 inches. Instead of creating two separate measurements, you can now use the split functionality to do this faster. The split functionality gives you more control over poly length and perimeter markups. Right click on one of the control points of the poly length. Select Split from the drop-down menu, and it will split into two measurements at that point. You can also choose to right-click on a line segment of the markup and select Split, and that segment will be split away from the other segments it's connected to, creating up to three separate markups. Select one of these markups, Right-click and choose Split All, and each segment will be split into its own polylength markup. The Resume functionality also works with polylength and perimeter markups, and allows you to add segments at the end of any of those measurements. Simply select this polylength's end control point, for example. Right-click and click Resume Polylength Measurement. Polylength also includes the ability to add a rise drop value, allowing the user to include an additional length to account for vertical runs of things like pipe, conduit, or cable, typically not displayed on a 2D plan. To add a rise drop value, select the polylength and open the measurements tab by going to tab access and selecting measurements. Under measurements, find rise drop and enter in the total amount to be added to that measurement. In this case, we know we have to account for two vertical pipe runs for an additional total of 12 feet, which will be added to the overall total. The rise drop is shown on the caption automatically. You can even save a measurement with a specific rise drop in the tool chest if you will have several similar measurements. When performing a takeoff of angled material, such as a roof or a steel beam, Adding a slope allows you to update the overall length or area, respective of the pitch, grade, or degree. This is especially useful for taking the area of something like a roof, which might appear in a plan as a simple rectangle. This option is available for the length and area tools. To add a slope to a length or area, open the Measurements tab and select the measurement. In this case, an area measurement of a roof as seen on this roof plan. Go down the tab to the slope. Select the Slope Display option and then the associated value in the entry field next to it and press Enter. You'll notice that the caption of the measurement and the entry of the markups list has updated to the correct area based on the slope and that the slope is displayed automatically in the caption as well. 
slope can be displayed in three different options, pitch, degree, or grade, depending on your workflow. Cutouts from existing measurements in review have been updated dramatically. When you click on the Cutout tool, you can now choose between a polygon cutout and an ellipse cutout, giving you an additional option for cutting out areas. For better accuracy when using ellipse cutouts, we recommend turning on the full screen crosshairs in the settings. You can now create a cutout over the edge of an area measurement, allowing you even more control over the area you are creating. All you need to do is begin your cutout inside the area measurement and extend it outside of the initial area. You can also now copy and paste those cutouts to speed up situations where you need to cut out identical areas, like around support columns. This works using the standard copy-paste functions and hotkeys, as well as control click and drag. Along with these options is the ability to fill a cutout with a new area or volume measurement, which makes it easier to add materials as an area or volume cutout. Take this floor plan with a cutout on it. When you select the area tool, you can then place your cursor inside the cutout, which will be highlighted in blue. Click to add the area. If the markup has multiple cutouts, you can shift and click to fill all the unfilled cutouts. Properties for certain measurements have been upgraded to allow you to fully customize the way they are visualized on the drawing. For the poly length, area, perimeter, and volume tools, you can now show the lengths of the individual segments of the measurements, in addition to the total measurement. This is an option you can check on and off in the Properties tab. When the option is checked on, you can also choose to display those values aligned to the segment or horizontally relative to the document. The Show Caption option now includes an Edit button, allowing for more control over the display of the captured dimensions. Checking the Show Caption box shows that information, and clicking on the Edit button next to the option activates a drop-down menu that allows you to choose which specific measurements related to that markup you want to display. Depending on the material being measured, having control over which measurement values are displayed provides clarity and flexibility. Another update to note is that the width and height columns in the markups list now show a measurement based on the scale of the document. These values are displayed for area and volume. The columns in previous versions of review displaying the size of the markup relative to the document size itself still exist, but are now named document width and document height. Also, units will now be displayed in the markups list next to their respective values, clearly showing the various units of measurement. Keep in mind, when creating a markup summary to CSV or XML, these units will export to a separate column which the user can elect to display or not display in the summary.